you found this video because you are looking to become a coach. Welcome. So here's the typical situation, more hypothetical. So you did sports in high school, you went to college, you possibly did sports there, you majored in kinesiology, and you finish, and now you're like, I wanna coach sports, where do I go? So you reach out to your alumni high school, and you get there, and they hire you to coach. So now you're doing well, you're learning all these things, but essentially the part that is really kind of frustrating is that you were, you were just thrown in. You didn't learn anything. You just did everything you did when you were in high school. And then you learned how the body operates from kinesiology, but you didn't really learn the application of coaching and things like that. And on top of that, you don't have your specific program. So now you're lost. And then you realize when you're coaching a season, the season ends. And then at the end of that season, your paycheck ends also. So what do you do next? Here are my tips for you that will help you become a better coach and be able to make some type of income. So the first thing is if you did graduate in kinesiology, you have a great understanding, a baseline of knowledge that is gonna be great and take you very, very far. Now, most people did not major in kinesiology. You just love working with kids. Well, how do you actually get that information across? Well, for both as a kinesiology major and just a regular person that loves sports, my biggest suggestion is go become a certified personal trainer. What the certified personal trainer certificate will do for you is it will teach you a few things. One, not only about the body and how it operates, but it will also show you how to actually teach other people right? The application process is the most important. I know a lot of very, very educated, smart trainers, but they're not people, 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 people. They're not people persons, people, people. And so the conflict with that is when they get in front of someone, the client actually wants to talk to them. They want to feel like they understand them. And if you don't, then it's very confusing. So many people would rather have a person that's cool and understands the basics than a person who is very, very book smart, but has never lived it, never seen it, never done it. So having a mixture of both will be the essential key. Now that you've become a certified personal trainer, you then take yourself out and you get clients. My first suggestion is go get adults. Why? Because adults don't really care about what you do because half of the adults just want someone to talk to and to hold them accountable. Many times as adults, we train, but we're not trying to get to this peak shape. We're just trying to get in shape to look good for ourselves and the people around us. So now if you're talking to those type of clients, well then you can make mistakes, you can do great things. At the end of the day, it's trial and error and learning how the body operates and seeing how your program actually works. But it's very important that you document everything. Why? Because as you're documenting everything, you're gonna see what works and what doesn't work. After so many months of training people, now you're in a space of, okay, I have a program simply established. I understand the basic biomechanics of movement. And now I wanna work myself into working with athletes. Then the next step would be going to camps and clinics, interning, learning as much as you can about application of athletes and etc. Even from there, youth club teams would love your internship and your hours for free, your support. Your, you giving back is going to allow the head coaches to build trust within you, but also they'll teach you their secrets. And learning those secrets is going to send you so far down this path of uh, coaching legacy and coaching greatness because they're going to tell you exactly what it is that works for them. And then once you see what works for them, you compare that to your ideas and plans. And then if your ideas and plans work, you can implement those things the coach said and then be a successful coach. Another avenue you can go to is an athlete training center. If you have some around you, go intern there interact with the athletes, see how the coaches explain, listen to the way that the athletes are responding and also see their progression. You're gonna get more specific training and more variations of support when you go to athletic training centers because there's multiple coaches, multiple philosophies and etc. Either way, as long as you donate your time, you're going to get something back in return and that information is 
priceless because it's called knowledge. Now, once you have the information from the coaches, you have experience when it comes to working with athletes, you have the knowledge about how the body works and that success, now you're ready to get out and actually train clients. First thing, when it comes to ethics, do not take the athletes from these camps clinics without asking for approval many times coaches will come in and intern and then they'll solicit their services to these kids at a discounted or cheaper price and then they move on with those clientele this is the unspoken thing but i will say is be respectful because those coaches have built the brand and they put in the sweat equity to get these kids to come to their program and when you come into their their house, so to speak, and take their clients. It's just not right, right? Just like working at 24 Hour Fitness, you can't work there and just take their clients and then train them there, right? Because they're offering the housing, they're offering the connection, and etc. So as a coach and you're going into the space of entrepreneurship and you really wanna work on getting your own clientele, you need to be the person that reaches out and build your clientele base from scratch. Build it up. When you have a program that is very successful and you know it's going to work, all you need is a couple clients. Then once those couple clients come into play, then you're gonna be set because those athletes are gonna tell other people and the word of mouth game happens to build and build and build. Now the biggest thing that is very important is you cannot become a successful coach without having results. If you do not have positive results year in and year out, you're just a distraction to these athletes. Now, there are a lot of coaches that don't go through this process and they just get thrown into the system, they market very well, and they build their clientele. Well, the conflict of that is, now if you don't have results or athletes are getting hurt or you're not paying attention to the athlete's year calendar and their sports calendar, now you could be aiding to that athlete's um, process towards 10,000 hours. And the goal is to get them 10,000 hours of knowledge, of experience, of gains, basically. And so when they get to the end of that 10,000 hours, they should be better. But if your program is actually training them on concrete, it's not really focused on their year calendar, then the issue with that is now you have an athlete who's training too much at the wrong time. When they get to their sport, their body's going to falter because now they're doing more hours. It's very important that you focus on the macro cycle of training, know what you're doing, make sure that you understand how it should be applied and when. And once you have all of that into play, you're going to continue building your program. So make sure that you're on the positive, friendly side of these teams. Um, and even if you're your own specific program, make sure you understand the macro scale. I'll do another video teaching you guys about the macro scale of training, uh, making sure that you're not doing too many things too soon. But at the end of the day, I know this was a very supportive video because as I'm saying it, I'm like, man, these are all the things that I did and it really helped to where when I got into the high school level coaching, I already had seven, eight years of coaching and a practice. So when I got into the high school sector, then everyone did well immediately and you can do the same. If you have any specific questions or you just love this video, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be posting many more videos just like this and also put your comments and questions in the comment box below. All right, till next time.